Da -da 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 -da. Well, would you look at this? I'm actually on time today. I wonder, could this just be a fluke? Or is my luck really changing? Well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? Computer, activate the subspace transmitter. Initiate broadcast. The most mind-blowing stories from across the universe. Exclusive interviews. Your most outrageous surely shenanigans. All of this and more starts now on your Starbase 118 Subspace Briefing. Hello everyone and welcome to another Starbase 118 Subspace Briefing. I'm your host for today, Sherry Gray. We here at GEN are pleased to be able to bring you another short, if still insightful, segment today. This time, you'll be hearing from Cal Ron Dickens, a security officer aboard the USS Veritas. And he is going to be educating us about Starfleet search and rescue teams. Commander, the floor is yours. Hello, I'm Commander Kadrov, Chief of Security and former leader of the search and rescue team of the USS Veritas. Space exploration is a risky business, something that could uncover a myriad of wonders, but all those wonders don't come without risk. Part of Starfleet personnel is responsible of dealing with those threats. Keep the crew safe from danger, this is part of the security personnel duties. But like almost everything in the universe, they are not foolproof, and sometimes people got hurt, lost, or captured. Many times, security in general has to deal with those issues, but some installations have the benefit of a specialized team of people ready to take on the more challenging missions where lives are at stake. They are known as the SAR teams. For those unfamiliar with them, SAR stands for Search and Rescue, and the concept has existed for centuries, since the first modern armies. For example, on Earth, one of the world's earliest well-documented SAR efforts ensued the following the 1656 wreck of the Dutch merchant ship Vergulde Dreieck of the west coast of Australia. Survivors sought help, and in response, three separate SAR missions were conducted without success. On 29th November of 1945, a Skorsky Air 5 performed the first civilian helicopter rescue operation in history. All five crew members of an oil barge, which had run aground on Penfield Reef, were saved before the barge sank. Since then, the concept of SAR teams was spread through the globe, and similar history was present on many walls throughout the Federation. With the deep space exploration era, the need for those teams to work in many different environments increased. At first, the group in charge of those operations was the Military Assault Command Operations, MACO for short. Although not their primary function, they were the best prepared for those kind of missions until they are disbanded with the creation of the Federation, although some of them were offered to be included in the security branch of Starfleet. Search and rescue missions could happen in almost every environment, ground, lowland, mountain, caves, urban, but also maritime environments, surface or underwater, and of course, space, either in an asteroid, moon, or installation, either a station or ship, with or without artificial gravity. If the environment isn't enough challenge, in some of them, like urban, ship, or base installations, they could need to deal with technological, scientific, or medical problems. And that's one of the reasons that SAR teams include people from any department. Those who are accepted to be part of the team undergo a specialized training, not only in hand-to-hand -hand combat and phaser targeting, but the other fields using their own personal experience to learn among themselves and build the team's synergy 
that make them work as a unit, improving their performance. That doesn't mean that they leave their duty posts. They still perform their usual duties, but in case of need, they could be called to the team for prompt deployment or in case they are headed for a mission that will require them going into action. To perform their duties of search and rescue, they have access to specialized equipment. For example, the Isara's Vest is a modular armored vest system that provides superior protection from physical attacks as well as substantial protection from most energy-based weapons fire. The modularity allows, for example, an engineer to have, in addition to the phaser holster, standard on all configurations, a tricorder pouch and various tools and equipment, pouches or clips, while a medical officer would carry advanced med kits, hyposprays, etc. A marine participant may have the majority of their Isaras dedicated to carrying weaponry and explosives, depending on the role of the individual has been asked to fill. The SAR duty uniform is made of a lightweight but extraordinarily durable synthetic fiber that is highly resistant to heat, cold and tearing. The SDU is also a temperature regulating fabric, allowing its wearer to better adapt to extreme temperatures and or rapid change in temperature. Aside from that, they have access to other items like a combat tricorder, body armor, power packs, grappling equipment, first aid kits, pattern enhancers, and a lot more that will take too much time to list them all. The SAR teams of Starfleet Marines have even more equipment at their disposal, including shuttles or runabouts. Search and rescue isn't for those looking for an easy post or a routine one, but for those trying to get the best of themselves, to thrust into the most daring situations and to make the difference for those in extreme need, rushing through places and situations where others will head the other way. As of today, you can find SAR teams on three installations. Those are the Starbase 118 Ops, the USS Excalibur and the USS Veritas. So, if you are interested, you know where to look for. I hope you all found this as insightful as I did and hopefully a fair bit more amusing. Anyway, that's all I have to say on the subject. Have a great day, everybody.